I know we're all about soccer here, but lately it's been all about basketball. I mean, Caitlin Clark has been taking over the world. <laughs> well, the U.S. anyway. I don't know what happens outside of the borders, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know, even someone like Leah Williamson, they asked who is the go of, you know, who is your the best women's athlete? And she said, presently, it's Caitlin Clark. And that's Leah Williamson. We saw Sam Kerr rock the Iowa jersey right before the national championship game. So the over there is a lot of overlap. Obviously, it's women's sports, but a lot of specific overlap. How's it going, everyone? Timestamps down below because we haven't been on in a while. And like Sarah said, we are a soccer channel channel. We will never we will never not be a soccer channel. But it has been all bask all women's basketball all the time on all of the socials. Our entire Instagram is practically just, you know, it's a little bit of soccer here and there, but it's like fully basketball. Yeah. You know, it's funny. A few years ago when we started talking about soccer, a lot of people would be like, You guys should watch WNBA, you should watch really get into it. There's never been a reason why I haven't, we haven't, but having it be but having it be so, I mean, it's everywhere, SNL. Um, and I guess, you know, fun fact, you know, Caitlin Clark's the biggest thing from women's basketball in a very long time. Biggest thing out of Iowa, pretty much ever. If anyone saw the videos like a few years ago, a few times I'd wear my, wear my Iowa hat because uh, that's Sarah's alma mater. Uh, yeah, we went to the same school, so... There you go. And did you ever think anyone from your college would be this famous, like from your university? Did you ever think this? Um, yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't think the. I didn't think it would happen. Okay, so very cool. So we have really been into the, uh, you know, obviously basketball, but specifically C Caitlin Clark because she is from the University of Iowa. So very, very cool. So we have been all about that, and it's been so fun to watch, like how many viewers they've been getting from the national championship to the to the draft. So who else has been enjoying basketball, women's basketball? Because. Hopefully we'll watch some games this year. Obviously we're extra into it because of Caitlin and Iowa, but it's all the players. I mean, seeing everyone get drafted and seeing what is to come, but it, it's it's all the players and all the teams. So it's very cool. We still ha we still never talked about She Believes. It's kind of what we're gonna talk about now. Um, we haven't made a video since She Believes, and I mean, Alyssa freaking there. I mean, you know the song, that's my girl. That's that's my girl. <laughs> I mean, she as I say this every time. She actually has more fans every single time she goes out there, um, because she believes the final. We're not gonna really talk about it, but USA wins on penalties and fun game. It was great to see it, USA versus Canada. That was not Watergate because that was the last USA Canada game, which was not that enjoyable. Um, and that was on penalties too, if you remember. Um, but that was a fun game, and obviously we saw the game. Sophia Smith scored twice. I mean, PKs, Alyssa Nair absolutely killed it, and she's like just amazing stuff. Uh, Alyssa Nair, of course, had a had a go at it, and she made it, of course, and then goes to save a goal right after that. I mean, amazing. Yeah. Um, I I wrote the, down this in my notes. The best the best thing Vladko ever did for the women's national team was make Alyssa Nair a standard PK taker. Like she's on the list. That was the best thing he's ever done for the team. <laughs> did he do that? Do the players decide who 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 decides? Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> the amount of power she has when she kicks. It doesn't even matter where she kicks. Practically, the amount of power she kicks with. It's we love it. So they won. Great to see. Only about 100 days until they started the Olympics. And it's going to be, you know, that roster is 18 slots. It's going to be so it's, it's always tight. And I think that we, we know that Listen Air is a lock. I mean, an absolute lock. There's a few locks, but Listen Air is, no, I would actually say the number one lock on that team. Yeah, for sure. And, and in my heart, of course. Oh, dear. <laughs> but besides you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So, so pumped for Alyssa, so pumped for the whole team. So, yes, yeah, so she believes exciting, excited for the Olympics. Also, um, there was a big game last week. And as we know, there was an international break that happened. And the United States had, she believes, the, the Euro qualifiers were happening. But once the international break was over, it went back to club play. And um, Man United and Chelsea had a very big game. And something kind of wild happened. 
But that was a very, very big game. It was for a semifinal for the FA Cup. Uh, Manchester United ended up beating Chelsea for the very first time. I'm going to read a tiny bit from this and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about something that happened. Manchester United advanced to an FA Cup final against Tottenham after holding out for a historic 2-1 victory over holders Chelsea at Lee Sports Village. In a rematch of last year's final, which they lost 1-0, Mark Skinner's United went in front in the first minute through a Garcia header before doubling the advantage midway through the first half when Rachel when Williams headed home. Former United player uh, Lauren James pulled a goal back just prior to the break and the visitors, visitors did most of the attacking thereafter, but were unable to f- force extra time with Mary Earps making a superb save to thwart James and substitute Catamar Katarina Macario hitting the bar. The result is a first victory for United over Chelsea since the team's launch in 2018, and they ha- they now have a chance to secure a, ma- a maiden piece of major silverware where when they return to Wembley on May 12th to face Spurs. Huge win. They won. It was very exciting for Man, man United. Um, anytime you have a first victory over someone. But one thing you did read. So the game was 2-0, and then right before the half, there was a ball and Lauren James scored. Tensions are high already, just based on everything. So she scored. After she scored, uh, Millie Turner picked up the ball because it was just right there. Then Lauren James went to go grab the ball from her. Uh, Lauren James wanted to restart the game quick. They were in added time. She wanted to get the ball going quickly because sometimes the other, you know, it's always mind games too. Okay. They were kind of wrestling a little bit because Lauren James came up kind of from the side. I'm sure everyone has seen this, but but during that altercation, they're calling it. So Millie had the ball in her hands. Lauren went to go get the ball to restart the game quickly. And they kind of wrestled over it. That kind of like wrestling. Uh, Millie kind of dropped her head down to kind of get away with the ball. And it looked for a second like her, that looked like Millie's head was in kind of like a headlock. It really wasn't, but there, there was kind of a snapshot of that moment i've seen i've seen so many players do that too they they actually like fight over the ball because you know um it's happened with jane campbell a few times uh where she has the ball and someone scored and but they've wrestled over it over it too so i mean i get i get it yeah it's like lauren maybe wants the ball maybe she just wants to get it started and then millie doesn't like that someone's come up on her to grab the ball you know so it's just a very tense atmosphere especially for the fa cup semi-final it's gonna be a tense atmosphere then so that happened during the game and then after the game's kind of where the firework fireworks went off i'm gonna read from this article because it seemed like after the game some tensions were high Lioness is divided. Lauren James appears to unfollow Mary Earps and Ella Toon after inclusion in Millie Turner Instagram post celebrating Man United's FA Cup semifinal victory over Chelsea. Chelsea star Lauren James appears to have unfollowed fellow Lionesses Mary Earps and Ella Toon after a post from Man United defender Millie Turner. Following the Red Devils' win over Chelsea in Sunday's FA Cup semifinal, Turner took to Instagram to post a series of images from the game, including including one of her and James battling to get hold of the ball after England after the England star had pulled a goal back for the Blues. Several of Turner's Man United and Lioness's teammates liked and commented on the post, and it appears that James has now unfollowed some of them. She is no longer connected with Turner, Toon, Earps, or Barcelona midfielder Kira Walsh on the platform. Turner has now disabled comments on the post. Some have criticized Turner's decision to include images of the tussle between her and James on the, on the post due to the criticism that could be aimed at the Chelsea star as a result. Despite players wrestling for the ball being a very common occurrence across football, some fans were surprisingly unhappy with James's actions, and the 22-year-old has sadly been subject, subject to vile and, unaccept, vile and unacceptable abuse before. James Turner, Toon, Earps, and Walsh were all included in the Lionesses' latest squad and are all likely to be called up by Serena Vigman again at the end of May for a doubleheader against France. France! <laughs> I don't keep that in. But yeah, it looks like she unfollowed them. And they have games coming up. They're going to be called to the squad. And so that should be interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's the story that they were involved in that spat. Then after the game... Uh, Millie Turner 
uh, posted the picture. Then she unfollowed not just Millie Turner, but she then Ella Toon, Mary Earps. And then I also read a comment. She actually unfollowed Kira Walsh mm. as well. But the part I kind of want to talk about um, more than anything for our video, the question is, is it, is it the camaraderie on the England squad? I mean, this isn't good for the England squad in terms of, you know, team building. That's not going to help you win games, I, I would think. Then again, the whole the whole Corbin Albert thing happened and she still played and and I mean, they're still playing on the team with her and that's got to be awkward. So I don't know. A lot of awkward things happening out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good point because I know that this summer, not to say this is good, but the um, Lionesses won't be playing uh, at the Olympics. So it really will give them a chance to retool uh, kind of have a summer to not worry about a major tournament, which in some respects might be good for the Euros for next year. But it's like these team meetings. I mean, you don't have to be good friends to be on the same team in general because a lot of teams win really big, even though they don't like each other internally. And that's been shown throughout history. And then also, you know, we always talk about the, is there sides? Who, whose side is who on? Because we saw last year with the whole Katie McCabe and Rusha thing, that locker room was probably divided into sides, you know? So, I mean, I, I'm kind of torn about the whole thing. I'm kind of torn. I, I think it was an interesting picture to post, but should Millie have posted that picture? I think that's a question some people are saying she has every right to, nothing was happening. But if you see the way that it happened, she wasn't in a headlock. It just was a quick snapshot. But then again, Lauren did come up and kind of grab, grab the ball from her hand. But I guess the big conversation that most people or a lot of people are having is should Millie have posted that picture knowing knowing kind of the climate of sports? And, you know, that, that definitely is a question. I also hope that, you know, whatever internal conflict is going on between LJ and Millie and the other girls that LJ unfollowed, I mean, that's hopefully that can be resolved. One of the biggest things for me is just accountability for people and fans who make racist and vile comments to be held accountable. That's kind of like the biggest, it's like accountability for saying really horrific things. I think that is one of the biggest things. I mean, I know that there is laws, actually someone just said there's like new laws in Scotland about it, but um, because you can't just be a nameless, faceless person on the internet and think that, you know, that's okay. But hopefully they can work it out, be, if not friends again, cool with each other. Because I know, because in the article, it made it sound like Mary or Ella or somebody had left a comment. I don't know if they had actually left a comment under Millie's post because I was looking for comments and I couldn't find it. Like on Twitter, I couldn't find it. So I'm not even sure if they left a comment or if they just liked it. But I mean, hopefully they, hopefully it can work out. And also, you know, Emma Hayes was asked about this and something's going on with Emma Hayes. <laughs> She's saying like the wildest things these days, like things that like media, like her media training has gone. <laughs> so because he was actually asked about this incident. Sarah, Sarah's going to read this. So they asked Emma Hayes whether Lauren James was OK after Millie, after Millie Turner's Instagram incident. And then she said, we don't look at Instagram. She doesn't have it. So I don't know. Haven't had a conversation about Instagram with her. We haven't talked about it. Um but we see Lauren does have Instagram. Yeah. So that was wild. So she made a weird cause she, you know, the comment was that she, Lauren doesn't have it, meaning Instagram. And then I see this comment here that says LJ does have Insta. Then I read this comment that says, so maybe she means she, she has social media, but she doesn't run it. I see this comment says it could easily be that LJ has someone else managing her social media. I'm sure that Emma has a better understanding than you about LJ and how she handles social media so yeah so what emma might be saying is she has like a famous person have someone running their social medias professionally a lot of these celebrities people with millions of followers actually don't run their own social media so maybe emma meant she doesn't really have control over that um so maybe that's what she meant that she does have it but it's not under her she has a team controlling it but then I guess that would raise the next question of if LJ doesn't have control of her Instagram, then the people behind her Instagram were the ones who unfollowed or maybe she said, hey, unfollow them. I'm actually not quite sure about that part. Um, but Emma, I, I don't know quite what Emma meant with those comments, but that's uh, it, it struck a few people as strange. Hopefully they can work it out. 
kind of come to an understanding, understanding, and even if they don't become like best friends or anything, you know, just become, you know, till teammates on the English squad, because they're still going to fight like hell on their club teams. But if they are all called to the, the national squad, that they can work together as a team on the England squad, you know, but good thing they don't have to, good thing that the Olympics start <laughs> coming up. But some would say maybe that would make them forget about all this stuff and just go to the Olympics, you know. Um, So that did happen. What did everyone think about that? You know, questions, comments down below. Exciting times. A lot going on. Obviously, she believes happen, happened so long ago at this point. But I guess the question is, who is going to be on that Olympic squad? Uh, I just watched the Alex Morgan get hurt. I don't know the outcome of it, but that's something also. Injuries are going to happen. Could be more injuries that happen, which is always scary. Um, so 100 days, the Olympics will be exciting. And then also, you know, Team England or LJ and Millie, the whole situation just really, you know, if LJ felt really hurt by what Millie did because she knows the out the impact that could have hopefully they can work that out because th those are those are serious talks i think and very valid talks also you know we're not becoming a basketball channel or anything but the level of excitement in in our home <laughs> during this iowa and caitlin clark run has been pretty exciting and the excitement around women's sports in general has just been so electrifying and it's so fun to watch and i was i was actually talking to someone about this that i think one of the reasons why people are really enjoying women's sports more so than ever is i think i think women's sports they see how how passionate women are and it's about the sports and i think of men's sports because it's such a business and it's so huge and they get paid so much it's almost like you feel like the the men the the male players that it's more about money and ego went away and I hope women's sports gets paid appropriately, but I think women's sports love the the women are so passionate. You know, if that makes sense. Questions, comments down below. What does everyone think? Hopefully we will make a video sooner than we did our last video, but so many exciting things going on. Um, but we will talk to everyone soon. Have a great night. Bye.